Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Savage Saturdays. As always, I'm your host, Derek Wyda. Joining me today is Owen. Hey. It's always Owen. Owen, the man behind the cameras. And then we have a special guest today, a good friend of mine. His name is Chad Cole. Say hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. Hi, Chad. <laughs> yeah. What a that's, douchey that's, joke. That's, that's, that's Chad. No, that, but you're a dad now. You can get away with that. Oh, yeah. You guys just had like a really cute baby girl, what, six months ago? It's a or boy, so? but yeah, he's eh, kind of feminine. Eh. <laughs> I've seen him throw a ball. Like, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, oh, man. This is, hold on. I got to take a sip here. I just made this. This is. What, mm. are, you, what are you drinking? Dude, I am such a slut for Irish coffees. Ooh. Do you have, have you had Irish, have you had an Irish coffee? No. God damn, dude, it will change your world. So I didn't have my first Irish coffee until I was in Ireland. Stacy and I went to Ireland in 20, what year did I get married? 2017. Yeah, we, we went to Ireland 2017. I had Irish coffee. It's fucking amazing. They're good. It's fucking amazing. They're good. And uh, so when I came home from Ireland, I was like, I need to learn how to make one of these Irish coffees. Okay. And so really it's just, uh, uh, my recipe is you put two teaspoons of brown sugar in the bottom of the cup. You pour your coffee in there. Obviously, I use shameless promo. Black Rifle Coffee, just black. Boom. Always just black. Just black. And then uh, and then you pour, I put Jameson in there. I've tried an Irish coffee. Everybody, please silence your phones. Jesus, you know who did that? <laughs> yeah. You're fucking sound guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> what an asshole. Oh, and Chad's touching his phone no, right no, now. No, we're good. Too. No, we're good. Yeah, I didn't do it. I it tried. Was already so professional. I tried to make an Irish coffee <laughs> with Maker's Mark one time and it's not an Irish whiskey. It, it is not the same. No, it was awful. It was, it was very bad. But, uh, so, so two teaspoons of brown sugar, put your coffee in, pour your Jameson. I do a shot. I do a heavy shot and then, uh, some kind of Irish cream. I use this uh, brand like McCollins or something like that, mm -hmm. but you can use Bailey's or something like that. But the thing is like in like a real Irish coffee in Ireland, they like fucking the cream is at the top. And so like the whiskey and coffee come through the cream and it's, it's very good. But have you ever whipped cream by yourself? No. Have you ever bought a carton of heavy whipping cream and then tried to whip it? Like when I was in fifth grade, I but dude, it is hard as fuck and it yeah. takes forever. It's not worth it. So when I came home from Ireland, I was like, I'm going to make a proper Irish coffee. And then I whipped cream for the first time. And I was like, fuck this. This is too much work. Fuck fucking this. Yeah. So. How, okay. So this is kind of an elaborate recipe. I this, feel like. this how is, long does this take you to make? No. So this is, this is super easy. And this one, this one doesn't have a, I'll be honest. This one doesn't have brown sugar in it, but the brown sugar, it's very good. You want to try it? Yeah. Try, try, it try a fucking, hold on. You know what? It's a it's a fucking Red Bull vodka for men, because you got <laughs> oh, I, I was not, it's, I was not expecting that. It's very good. Yeah, and that was fucking, good, dude. It's fucking delicious. And so this is how I start. This is how I start my drinking on most days. I've been it's it's a uh, what are we going on here? It's 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 three thirty. I've been drinking since eleven. I'll tell you, like. I've been well. I've been drinking since yesterday, to, to be to be to be quite honest with everybody. Um, but I always I like starting out with a nice Irish coffee. It's the perfect. It's got coffee, warms you up, gets you feeling good. It's got the whiskey in there. Gets You're talking you talking about in the morning? No, no, no. When I when I'm gonna <laughs> it's pre workout. Not how I start my day. How I start my drinking typically. You yeah. know, no matter if I you know, you know my my drinking is always pretty calculated. If it's an event or a podcast, or so, I like a nice Irish coffee. It's a it's a it, it it's my thing. It's my thing. It's actually the only time I drink whiskey. Are you a big whiskey drinker? Yeah, I'll drink whiskey. Yeah. yeah. See, like, dude, I used to love, I used to drink the shit out of whiskey, but the problem is I kept trying to fucking kill myself, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I was like, shit, I might have to lay off the whiskey a little yeah, bit. That's you know? a good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'll happen. It's all know? fun and games till you try and kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, like in, in the past, like, uh, friends out at the bars will offer me shots and things like that. And I'll be like, Oh no, man, I can't take a shot. And they're like, Oh, come on, pussy. And it's like, no, dude, I will like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good on hard alcohol. And they're like, everybody just kind of assumes that you get aggressive and you want to fight people and stuff right. like that. And they're like, come on, pussy, you can do this shot. I was like, I will ruin this motherfucking party so fast. Like nothing ruins a party <laughs> faster than a grown man crying, talking about killing himself. Like that is, that is the end of the night right there. You know? like, time to like, go. I will start crying right now. And, and, yeah. So Shit, at I, that, if it, if it gets to that point in the conversation, when they're offering me a shot, 
not, they understand. Right. You know? Yeah. So well, I yeah. was about to bring whiskey too. That's a good yeah. thing I didn't. It's good yeah. thing you didn't. No, like, yeah. So my, my, there's that, that bottle. I got a bottle of Maker's Mark that's been on the top of my fridge for five years. Yeah. A friend of mine gave it to me as a housewarming gift. But, you know, I used to go through two liters of Jack a day. I mean, you know, I haven't done that for years, I know, yeah. decades. That was, that was, yeah, that was like the that was two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Derek, yeah. yeah. Well, how mm-hmm. long did you realize that that's a bad idea? Well, about about five months after my second DUI. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was a, a, a slow learner, man. I was a slow learner. You know? Recognize the pattern and decided yeah, that no, this is yeah, not, not that's good. That's what I was. That that was my life plan at the time when I got medically retired from the army. I was like, all right, I'm going to spend all my money on booze, and then just when it's when my bank account hits zero, I'm going to kill myself. So that was yeah. So anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, we're gonna have a good time. No, I don't even care. Like that's just how that shit goes sometimes, man. You know. But uh, you were like Al Pacino in uh, a few good was it a few good men or the one where he's in jail or no he's in court. Do you know which one? Uh, I have no idea what you're you talking about. You have no about. idea. Mm-mm. Anyway, that no. was his plan mm. to to drink a bunch and then kill himself. That was my life plan. Yeah, yeah. I had like fifty k, and I was just like, well, I'll spend it. And I spent that shit in like that three was a months. conscious thought. You had. Yeah, that was that was literally my fucking plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, we invited my friend Chad Cole here today. <laughs> I've, uh, yeah, yeah. I've, that's the best segue ever way. <laughs> yeah, we know. I just I like saying that. I was just like anyway. Anyway. You know, anyway. I mean, like that's kind of that's this is a normal conversation with me. We could talk about we could be talking about masturbating, going to suicide, and then the happiest day of our life <laughs> in the span of two minutes. I do not give a fuck. I'm not uncomfortable with anything. <laughs> like, and so yeah, so Chad Cole's joined us today. Um, Chad, you and I have been friends since. Gee, it, we're, I think we're going on our fourth year fourth yeah. year chad you run crossfit apollo here in las vegas mm-hmm. and i've been working out that's where i've been doing my training i've been training at your gym um uh and also chad you used to be you know these there's there's some questions i want to ask you today because you've kind of come you've moved from athlete to coach and that's a transition i seem to be unable to make and even sometimes i don't know and we'll get into this, but sometimes I don't know if you're being honest with yourself or you're lying to yourself. And I'm and I'm kind of gonna. So uh, for those of guys uh, you who don't know, Chad, you took you went to the CrossFit Games in 2015. Yeah. What was that like? What was it like going to the fucking games? Like you went to the games. Chad went to the games. Wow. You were at the games, and you weren't just at the games. You did very well. You did very fucking well. What was it like? Um, or how did that fucking happen? Uh long time of training. Yeah. Uh, it took about, oh, so 2011 was my first year of competing, but I'd done CrossFit since 2009. I qualified in 2015. I'm not, and you sucked at CrossFit when you started because I have yeah. seen your Jackie video. You know, <laughs> I showed, I showed my mom that video yeah. the other day. Cause you know, so People don't understand in CrossFit, there's a long learning curve and people are embarrassed or ashamed because they look stupid when they start. And so my mom works out at CrossFit Apollo at your gym. And she was talking to me the other day because she was insecure about how she looks for this movement or something like that. I was like, mom, you're still learning. I was like, you know, the, the, the guy who owns the gym, the really fucking really good CrossFitter. Here's him when he started. And Terrible. I showed I showed her that video of you doing Jackie. But everybody starts yeah, there, that, man. That's awesome to you be able have to, see, to too. Like, if you don't fucking have that video, you're not a fucking, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So you started CrossFit back then. You started competing. How'd you fucking wind up at the games? You know, I think you said learning curve, right? And for me, that learning curve, I think, was a lot longer than I think most people. Now is going back and forth between being confident and then, you know, self doubt. Um, cause I mean, I started so long, like a few years of just like looking up to these guys, like the Matt Chans, the Chris Spielers, the whoever. And as soon as I competed next to them at like a regional event, um, I crumbled. I just didn't feel it was like weird. I belonged. You just got ner- yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You just, you just feel like, what am I doing here? Did I cheat? Did I somehow like cheat to get here? And so I think for the first few years is kind of battling that and figuring, finding out some confidence, but, um, but Outside of that, I think more than the physical gains that I met to be the fit person that I was to compete at the CrossFit Games, for me, the biggest gains I saw were mental ones. Um, went a long way. It's the biggest. It's the biggest. I, my my mental shift happened, I think, in 2017. 
And uh, yeah, it's crazy once you uh, become a, um, it's crazy what uh, confidence can do or something like that. So like, I, I, I never really thought of that, you know, like I, I try to put myself in your shoes while you're telling that story. Like you had this goal of, of being a good CrossFitter and then all these guys you look up to you or all these guys you look up to are standing right next to you and you have to compete against them and you hold them in such high esteem that you're like, how the fuck? There goes your voice that says, I'm a fucking, my name's Chad Cole. I'm a fucking winner. There goes your voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't even know this. Like, so you went to the games in 2015. Mm -hmm. Did you go to regionals at all before that or? Yeah. Every year since 2011. So, really? so you made regionals for all those yeah, years 11, 12, and you just 15. never made it. And that never was just all, it. but that was like, and okay, very cool. So, and you didn't give up and was, did the, did the, did the fire grow? every year it grew until um i finished 14 so i i just barely missed the games by i think one spot yeah it was one spot in 2014 and uh at that point like the whole reason for me to compete was like i wanted to prove to myself that i could do it and then in 2014 i missed it by one spot i lied to myself in a sense that i was like i deserve to be here like i finally proved to myself but i kind of said that as a cop-out because i was afraid to fail in 2015 yeah and then, um, you know, just after a few months of just kind of training, just kind of going through the motions, I decided it wasn't enough. Um, I needed to actually, you know, get the stamp of approval of uh, punching my ticket to Sure, California. so you couldn't accept close enough. You're like, no, I actually have to fucking make it. Yeah. Yeah. And there, yeah, and, I, and I've, heard the, I've heard the story before of, of when you were at regionals in 2015 mm -hmm. and the moment that you knew you were going to make it to the games. What was, what was the workout? Well, so it was, there's three days. And on day two, I was sitting one spot out of the CrossFit Games. And I knew the next two days, I was just going to just destroy it. And I knew it. I knew it was a good couple of events for me. Um, and uh, so the, the workout that, that really kind of set me up and put me into a qualifying spot was like five rounds of rowing, chest bar pull-ups, and, and strict handstand push-ups at a deficit. And I won that event and I knew I was going to do well. Casual. Right. Casual. <laughs> yeah, but, no, just but casually yeah, fucking, you know, like, I'm, dude, I'm just, I'm, you know, I just like, sometimes I don't like you because <laughs> I'm jealous and envious <laughs> because, you know, like you got those two legs that you can take to regionals and, and, fancy and legs. there's no, there's no fucking cripple combine regionals. Fucking no, that's cool, man. Yeah. So, you, so, so yeah. What, what, what did you end up placing when you at, at regionals that year, when you went I, to the games? Fifth. fifth. So they took the top fifth, five Yeah, mm -hmm. and I barely, I, I made it, barely yeah. made it. Well, that's still making it. You know, so yeah, making it's making. And then you it. go to the mm -hmm. games, dude. Is the game was the games cool? Is it is it fucking? Where was it in 2015? It was in Carson, California. So okay, yeah, LA. and that's the year Ben Smith won, right? Yeah, it was Ben Smith. Matt Fraser took second, and he was fucking butt hurt about that because he thought with Rich Froning stepping down that he was going to be next, and mm -hmm. yeah, and then you took, dude. You ended up taking twentieth. It's fucking amazing. The twentieth fittest man in the world on five his, years ago on his first it's, it's, competition it's like it's you know it's, it's, at his first games he took <laughs> yeah. Fifth. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's funny as you say that and i i've told this to my wife before i'm like can you believe in 2015 i was the 20th fittest man alive she goes i mean of the guys that competed I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah well that's that's Whoa. a that's a that's a dude like i think about that like so like you know i love crossfit yeah and i watch all the documentaries and stuff like that and the title <clears> for <throat> crossfit is fittest man on earth fittest mm -hmm. woman on earth but it is those who compete in crossfit and sometimes i wonder and i don't want to take anything away from fucking anybody who wins but i just wonder you know, or I'm a cunt. I was in the military. I'm like, there's a lot of fit motherfuckers in the military oh, yeah. who aren't competing in CrossFit, but it's, it's a sport. Okay. So it's like, you know, so like, you know, it's like whoever wins the Super Bowl was the best team that year. It's, 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 it's true in its own right. It's just an interesting title. Yeah. When you say fittest person in, uh, in the world, that's a bold claim because it should, it should be like fittest CrossFitter in the world. Cause it's a sport, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, a fair it's a, claim though it's a but it's a yeah right but, but, but i get it like it's a it's an interest i know like i'm not being a hater i i love crossfit and but <laughs> i i love fitness and i'm like fuck man that's a strong thing to say because 
did everybody in the world show up to this competition? No, <laughs> or, or qualify. <laughs> so if Saquon yeah. Barkley decided to compete, yeah, in yeah. 2015. But but but, but ah. like but maybe but he probably sucks at CrossFit. It's like CrossFit is a sport. It's a sport. You have to train for it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. And uh, so you took 20th at the games. What's your what's your most memorable story from the games? Somebody you like, somebody you fucking hated. Who's a who's a cunt? In, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Derek wants you to talk yeah. shit about someone. I want, I want to know the dirt. <laughs> Who are the fucking secret fucking cunts? Hey. There's some cunts out there. I I'm going to be are. honest. There, there weren't any. Now, there were a few guys that are a little more douchey than others, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, we're in the fitness industry. You're Who's the see douchiest? That. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I won't make you say. Yeah, so. I, I, don't, I won't say. But I already know. Uh, but, but they're all good guys, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah, they're all good people. It, it, yeah, it's a, a bit, you know what? It's, uh, it's weird how we, you know, even sometimes myself, I'll, I'll watch a, I follow CrossFit and I watch the documentaries and I find myself judging somebody negatively for the ego that they portray. Yeah. But they're at a fucking competition. Right. It is, it is. And if you're not there telling yourself that you're the fucking baddest motherfucker on the planet, yep. what are you even doing there? Yeah. You hype yourself <laughs> you up know? so you get to, yeah, so you can so, win. So, and I, and I wonder how, I wonder how they feel like, cause they're getting portrayed like that, but they're just normal people too. Yeah. Yeah. So 2015, you took 20th at the CrossFit games and that's, that's awesome. That's an op awesome accomplishment. But then you, uh, then you fucking stopped. <laughs> you know, I don't, and this is what I don't understand. And I, but like, I do understand. And I don't understand. So you, what year did you open Apollo? 2011, 2011. So you'd been, and so I was coaching for about a year before that in my garage. Yep. And so you got a good, you got a good business running and things like that. What, 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 what made you make that decision? You took 20th at the games like that's, but if, so if it was, I'm just, because it doesn't make sense to me. Like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me because if I took 20th, I, if it's, you know, uh, did you watch the fittest, the most recent documentary? No. When, okay. So Matt Fraser says to him, there's no difference between, or the, like there's first place or there's you lost, you know, there's, there's first or nothing. And I have, that's my mentality. It's mm -hmm. like, whatever I do, I want to be the best at it. And I don't know why. And maybe it's not always a good thing. And, and you guys know, I'm not, it's not like a, I'm not the guy with the most confidence. I don't have the biggest ego. I'm a humble, modest guy. But for some reason, if I'm going to do something, I want to be the best at it. Right. And so if I took 20th at the games, I'd be like, all right, cool. I improved from last year. But now, like, my goal is to get to first. And you didn't, mm -hmm. you must have had that voice in your head that wanted, you must have thought that you could win. Yeah. I, you know, for a while, I kind of, so when it comes to being the best, it comes with a, enormous sacrifice mm -hmm. and even being one of the best, which I was in that moment in time, it took an enormous sacrifice. It's your whole life. It is. It's your whole life. It's like, people don't understand. It's not just the training. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like literally every minute of your day. If you're choosing to be a professional athlete, because I think, um, and I, it, it's, it's weird for me because there's no games for someone like me or there's no championship bout or something like that but when i'm in a training cycle i take it as seriously as you did in 2015 mm -hmm. so it's 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 you know it's it's the routine and your rest and your food and like literally every minute of your day becomes uh uh your job because you always feel that pressure of if if you're not doing something your competition is well not only that too like it's it's when you have nothing to do that's all you can think about. That's all you obsess over. What's my next workout? What's my, how could I have done better in that previous workout today? And you take it as a learning experience for your next training session. Yeah. Like it obsesses and fully just wraps around your whole life. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes to be a fucking champion. <clears throat> that's uh, that, like, that's what it takes. You know, Stacy and I, Stacy, we, we talked about this before on the podcast. <laughs> That 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 uh, podcast Stacy likes the yep. Happiness Lab. Yep. The Michael Phelps is coach. That, that's his thing about goals. Is like it takes what it takes. It takes what it takes to be a champion. That's what it takes. Twenty four seven three sixty five. You know, like every fucking thought you have and things like that. And so, what what made you decide you didn't want that? Yeah, you know, for me, it took a long time to figure that out. Yeah, it, it did, and it and it, I come. It was a battle for me for at least two years, I would say closer to three yeah. of, am I still an athlete? Am I still competitive? Um, 
and kind of battling that back and forth, but it's completely gone away now. And, and I'll tell you why I, um, for me, like we talked about, it's the sacrifice that you make. Um, and when you sacrifice so much, other things start to go away, right? Your, your family life isn't as strong. Your business isn't nearly as strong. And what I found is that (laughs) we've been like business absent for two months because I've been in a training cycle. So like, this is like, (laughs) I am, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll just say here, like Chad, I've known you since 2016 and you're, you are somebody that I still have a lot to learn from. I've been learning from you for the last four years. And I'm almost asking this because I'm in still in this place. Like you were trying to decide how to make that transition and you said it took you two years. I think I'm going on year five. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so. But you still but, haven't let go of it. And, and, and the thing is, I don't think you don't ever know will how entirely. To let go. Like, I don't think you ever there's will. there's no way that you're not still a competitive guy. When you watch the games, don't you fucking think, like, I want to. Is There's got to be a part of you that says, I want to be there. You know, there's a part of me that thinks, like, all right, if I would have given up everything else, where could I be today within the sport? Yeah. You know, and, I, and I've thought about that before. But then I think if I make that choice, where am I in five years? Because there is an expiration date on fitness. Sure. Right. Yeah. Well, as far as competitive fitness. Yeah. And so uh, for me, it may, it was an easier decision in that regard. Uh, it wasn't the primary motivating factor, but definitely played a role. Yeah. Um, but kind of going backwards just a little bit, that, that focus on so much training and the obsession that we talked about that everything else starts to go away. I wasn't, it wasn't worth it to me anymore. And, and for me, it was never a goal to win the CrossFit games. It was to go to the CrossFit games and it was never to go to the CrossFit games multiple times. It, it, whenever I trained for years, I never had that thought pop in my head. Um, see, I just don't understand. I don't relate to that because like everything I do, I want to win. I, and, and I don't always accomplish that, but you know, yeah. like every, I don't under like, okay. Like, but I like, I, I'm unhealthy in that regard. Like, that's the thing, man. I fucking really, I really, you know, I like listening to you talk because you have more balance in your life than I do. Like in you, like, do you hear this? Yeah, Owen? no, like, I totally, yeah, like, totally, yeah. totally, totally. <laughs> well, yep. I mean, so I think, it's, it's a strength and it's a weakness, right? If I had that mental fortitude in a sense where I'm narrowly focused on that objective, where I see only winning and that's it, then I think I had the physical potential to do it. Fuck yeah, dude. Um, like, you got like chat, you like, if you, like, you're a stupid, now you're just working out casually and you're still, you could go. Anytime you wanted to fuck, like, that's the thing I don't understand. Anytime you wanted to go to the games, it would just be a decision because physically you are an amazing fucking athlete. It would take about a year or so of training, but yeah, I think I'm there. Yeah. Like, but that's what, it's just a decision and you can, you could always go. So is your, so like when you're saying you're training, is, is your training as, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Is your training as, I guess, uh, all encompassing as like what Derek's is, or are you still able to run a business and, and do all the other? Yeah. So that's, that's the main thing is, 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 um, for me, when I was training for the CrossFit games and trying to be competitive, I worked out for an hour and a half every single day, uh, which is not much more than I'm doing now. That's your train. That was your training. That was my training for, for, for wow. the CrossFit games. Now, once I had qualified, I did that twice a day for like okay. a three month period leading up to it. Yeah. Uh, but all the way through those years, it was, it was just that, uh, because I was seeking that balance. Right. And my strength is my weakness where I had that mentality of winning wasn't a focus because I knew it, it didn't seem like a reality to me with, the balance that I was seeking in my life. Granted, it wasn't a complete balance because I was obsessive. Uh, but anyways, um, so now it's an hour a day. Um, and, uh, it's just a lot less intensity. I, I kind of forgot the question a little bit. Uh, so are no, we no, comparing the, the two? He, he answered yeah, he, you good. answered yeah, it. Yeah. yeah oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Less intensity, but I'll tell you what, like I watch you work out. I'm there at open gym and like when you, you and it's like me and you are so different because I'm a slut to my routines. Like everything has to line up perfectly and my environment needs to be right. Everything has to be right. And Chad just fucking shows up and goddamn goes hard. And I, and I think, I think, uh, a lot of my, 
neuroses are due to my having a fake leg type thing. It makes things a little bit more difficult and stuff. I used to be more casual like you um, when I had, <laughs> you know, when I wasn't a fucking cripple. I just, <laughs> I, I love, I love how you just show up and work out, man. But, um, so, um, but yeah, so you, you, you decided to step away as an athlete and kind of focus more on your business, but, you, but not because of your business, but because the people that, are asking people are asking you for help people come up like your business is you're a gym owner and you have to think like there's the dark world of the business where it's just fucking numbers right like we all have to think mm -hmm. about it and treat it as a business but but at the end of the day like your business is people are coming to you for help with their health and fitness and things like that and i think uh, i think it's fucking awesome because what i gather from you every time we talk is like you care about these people so fucking much or you care about these people more than you care about yourself it's like, yeah, you, like, yeah, I could do these. Like, yes, Derek, I could go to the games again, but I would rather focus on these motherfuckers, you know, mm -hmm. like that's a, a, a cool thing. And, and, and so you've been running CrossFit Apollo for you, shit. You're going on 10 years next year. Yeah. Nine years, October. Yeah. Wow. But now, but now what's the, you're what? fucking shut down. Like yeah. you are shut down. We are, we are COVID-19 fucking shut down what do you like and i um so that's that's one of the main reasons i wanted to bring you here today and talk to you because i the this shit breaks my fucking heart because I, I i have a lot of friends who are gym owners and everybody right now is kind of like what the fuck what the fuck what the fuck are we're gonna lose our business we're gonna lose our members and things like that what is it just just tell me like and dig into like do open a heart surgery with yourself what what's it what's what's life been like the last two weeks as a gym owner uh you know it's been up and down like i think for everybody else you know like um there's there's days where you know you're you're frustrated you're confused you don't know what's going on you're angry you know and then there's days where you're just kind of content and you're just kind of like, all right, let's just go with the punches and see what happens. You know, it's, it's like this, just this flow. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> what makes you angry? Well, it's the unknown, right? It doesn't, it feels like no one's on the same page, you know, as far as is this legit? Is this not legit? You know, you get a lot of different, uh, you know, opinions on it. And, um, and, and so because there's so much kind of gray water here, it's hard to get a clear picture. Yeah. And that's, and that's the most frustrating part here. Um, media has been really bad at that, but like, dude, Hey, like, yeah, every, it's, <laughs> yeah, like that's, that's so I, I, you know, I think about that and it's like, uh, so it's, it's the unknown that bothers people, the unknown and yeah. stuff like that. And I was thinking about it just the other day. Cause like what's happening right now with, with all this, like what's happening right now fits my worldview. It, it like, I am mentally prepared for something like this to happen. So I'm just like, oh yeah, this, this makes sense. But I don't think this fits a lot of people's worldview as far as like people facing their mortality and what life is and things like that. Like this, is a, like a vi it's a virus. Mm -hmm. Viruses exist like we do, <laughs> you know, like life is fucking weird. Life is funny. And so like, yeah, so it's, so you're angry because so, but I, I wouldn't say I'm, I wouldn't say I'm angry. I, I no, I get it. Like emotions yeah. happen in weird ways. It, it, you know, I guess anger, anger is a stronger emotion than what I'm actually feeling. Yeah. I think more than anything, it's just like your hands are up. Like what's, what's happening? Yeah. Super like, frustrated. What's going on? You know, like yeah. you just want answers because when you have answers, then you can plan, yeah. you know, whether it's, you know, a really shitty situation then you can, okay, you mm -hmm. just digest it and then you create a plan going forward. And, but it seems like every single day, every, it, it was, what, two weeks ago, it seemed like every hour there was something new. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to get shut down in a week. Oh, nope. Tonight, you're yeah. shut down. Like, yeah. it's just, it's crazy. And then just on April 1st, uh, our governor did like a stay at home order, yeah. which is a terrible time to do it. Don't announce anything on April. I know, April yeah. Fools. I know. I was so, <laughs> yeah. I was, dude, I was Wait, just, is this, real? this April Fools this year sucked. Everybody was a fucking bitch. Is I it? didn't see one good goddamn. <laughs> so I had the idea. I wanted to, I was like, fuck, man. I was going to post, I have a couple pictures of me in the hospital from years past, you know, and I was going to post a picture of me saying like, I have COVID-19, oh but God. I didn't, I was never hooked up to a ventilator. And so I, I legit thought, I was like, man, I just want to like, 
you know, pull some strings. I want to get a picture of me in a hospital on a ventilator saying I have COVID-19 <laughs> hey, and that's on. my April fool's joke. But you know, like, Hey, I didn't do it, but that was my idea. You, I know you don't care to be polarizing, <laughs> but you would have gotten ripped. Oh dude. yeah. You would have hey, gotten ripped. Insensitive. Hey, these, these are, yeah. Well, like, yeah. So like, you know, <laughs> Too soon, hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> but, that, but like, but nobody, nobody did a goddamn thing on April Fools. And usually, the internet is the place to go for a good fucking, a good laugher. You know, yeah. I mm-hmm. didn't see a goddamn thing on April Fools. Did you? The only thing I saw was people. Ca- I had two friends who kept posting pictures of like, uh, like a school bus saying that their local school district had determined that everybody for that year had to repeat the year. Oh, and I mean, it was, I would have believed it. Yeah. I, well, and I did like, I was yeah. like, I'm telling it to my wife. I was like, Hey, did you hear that? So-and-so's like, they're just have to repeat the year. She's like, it's April 1st. And I was like, Oh man, that's a stupid, yeah. <laughs> that's a stupid yeah. joke. No, but that's, that's, that's the, the only that's one I saw. The, from my understanding, the point of an April fool's joke on the internet is it has to be as awful as possible. Thus my being hooked up to a ventilator. Right. Idea. I didn't follow through with that. In my defense, don't judge me, <laughs> Chad. I didn't <laughs> do it. this, okay? <laughs> yeah. So, and now now you guys are shut down for but now you know you're shut down for the month <clears throat> of April. Like you are fucking shut down. And I think a lot longer. Yeah. You think longer? Yep. It I has do. to be, dude. It, like, with like, April is just the peak, you mm-hmm. know. And um, so, I think, I think what's gonna, I just read it was yesterday or today that they they've come out with a test that can test you to see if you've had it. And I think that's gonna do a whole lot of one. I think a lot of you people know, have you know, what's funny is what I've heard is like, so Shot Show was here late January, yeah, and I, everybody was getting sick. At I was Shot talking Show. to you about that, and 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 it's like, so nobody. I, that's we were supposed to do some shit with Black Rifle, and they, but fucking yep, Logan come down with the fucking Shot Show fucking yeah. gonorrhea. We had or it. wherever the shit had. Yeah, dude, so it was bad at our house. So and yeah, we were looking at the time frames of like when yeah. it supposedly went out in in China, when yeah. it started coming over here. Shot show brings a lot of people over here from Asia, no, like dude, thousands. You know what's funny, man? Like, so I think like, we here's, had it. Here's a I, yeah. I took a class in high school. I had a I, I had a very I went to a shitty inner city public fucking high school, mm-hmm. but I had this I had this uh uh teacher, he 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 taught history, but he made his own curriculums and he got them approved by the state and shit like that. It was super cool. So I took a I took a class in high school called Plagues, Pox, and Pestilence. Okay. And his name was Mr. Nelson. And so I fucking I took this class about how plagues and illnesses reshaped fucking the world oh yeah you know and this sure. is we're just living it, it doesn't happen often but we're living in it right now that was yep. a class we, yeah it was a play I'm box and blown away by that yeah uh-huh and there's actually a really good book up here somewhere called guns germs and steel mm-hmm. um it's like dude sicknesses reshape the f- this isn't the first time this is fucking happening oh no and won't be the last on earth yeah no. this no. is it just so happens we're living in one right and like our parents didn't live through one right and well, even our grandparents that's the part sorry but that's the part I'm a little bit worried about is this has never happened in our grandparents or, well, maybe our grandparents, I think, nah, they're all gone. Great grandparents. But anyways, this has never happened in our parents' lifetime. Yeah. When, was right? small po- when was smallpox? I don't know, but you know, I but think, well, it didn't cause this though. No, you're right. Right. Like what I mean is like whole, whole world shut down, but I think this is going to happen again within the next 10 to 20 years. Well, Bill Gates yeah. called this shit. Stacy totally. showed me this cool, yep. you know, and actually, so like I, if, if we're going to have a pan, I like we're So this is good training. We need to be, we need to be well trained for this. And 100%. this, this, this like the fucking COVID-19 doesn't just instantly drop people dead on the spot. Okay. And so we're fucking learning how to, Oh, could you imagine like, if this yeah. was like a flesh eating bacteria? So this or is a good, this is a good learning like experience yeah. and you know, it's a, but like, and with learning experiences come growing pains and things like that. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, I've, I've been, uh, you know, getting onto the business, like what, you know, Owen and I like to say adapt or die. Like a lot of people, I, I do see a lot of people fucking complaining and they're like, woe is me. Woe is me. You know, this, I, they're like, my fucking business is shut down. And, but like, it's welcome everybody. to earth, motherfucker. Welcome to life. Shit fucking happens. What are you going to do about it? So what are you doing about it? Like, what's your, what's your plan this <clears throat> month? Well, first of all, I hate complaining. Yeah, right? I think I <laughs> yeah. think complaining is is a terrible 
thing to do because complaining essentially is you're complaining about something that's either going to happen or something that's already happened, right? But yeah. complaining is wasted energy. You're not, yeah. it doesn't change anything. What it just, the fuck are you going to do about it? Yeah, yeah. Like what's the plan? So there's a quote I heard the other day. I'm going to butcher it and I have no idea who said it. Okay. But it was, if you don't like your circumstance, change your circumstance. Yeah. You can't change your circumstance, then then change your mindset, right? Yeah. Like, and I think I'm, we're at that point right now is we don't know what our circumstance is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to create the plan. Yeah. So you had to have a mindset of uh, positivity, right? L looking for cracks in the, either the system or, or, or the direction people, things are going to find your way in, right? Where, where can you find opportunity? Mm -hmm. Right. And so that's a, as a business uh, man uh, with, you know, a couple different uh, ventures here, that's the angle. Now you have to keep your eyes open, but if you're wasting your time complaining about something, you're going to miss an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah, dude, I, I think we, I think we talked about that a little bit on the last podcast when I was telling my business story, like yeah. we say adapt or die at no point do you fucking, cause like some weird shit has happened to me at every fucking turn, right? Like none of this where, where we're at right now, was not my fucking plan. Oh, totally. You yeah, know, right? and, um, but just, dude, oh my God, I, I just see so much fucking complaining. Not, but I, but as, as for, for every person I see complaining, I see somebody like you who's doing the goddamn thing. And, uh, you guys are, what, what, so what are your, what are the modifications you've been making to your business yeah. to, you know, I mean, because you have, you, you're still collecting member fees. Mm -hmm. And, and so you have a responsibility to serve these people. What are you doing? Yeah. Um, so to kind of decide where I'm going to go with this. First of all, it's, it's more than a responsibility because with, with our business, it is like you said before, it is like this close knit, just group of people. Yeah, that these are really your friends love. and family. And exactly. I and so it's, you, you want to help them through this whole thing. Uh, and so kind of our business model, what we do is we, it's a CrossFit gym. And so most, if not all will run similar to this. Our average membership is around $130. Uh, we have between, um, we have around 280 members and, um, in the middle of April, we got shut down, mm -hmm. right? Most people have already paid for their membership. And so we have to provide value as much as we possibly can from a business standpoint, yeah. but then to help them out personally from just a, just a well being standpoint. Yeah. Um, and so we have to earn that dollar for the rest of April. Yeah. Right. Or um, even, I'm, can I cut you off real yeah. quick? I'm just going to say like, here's what like, I think. Um, I know. So I, I've, I've been a part, I've been a, a, a member of your gym for four years. And when somebody's in the hospital or somebody has a kid or somebody has a fucking life thing going on, you guys support the shit out of them. I see it. Like when, when somebody get, when somebody's in the hospital, your gym fucking like does this like meal thing where you bring people food or if somebody has been on lockdown in their house for some reason or something like that, cause I'm a part of the Apollo members Facebook group. Right. If somebody's on the fritz, everybody fucking comes together and they do things for those people. That's and awesome. so now Apollo is on the fritz and, and it's a, it'd be like you guys give a shit about your members. And I see, or, and it, it breaks my heart that a lot of like, so my other friends who own gyms, their members are canceling their gym memberships yeah. right now. And it's like, you supported these people and you would have supported anybody in their time of need. And now is your time of need. And like, whereas you've never asked your member base for a favor. Now as a business owner, you're asking them for a favor. Like, yeah. Hey, don't cancel your membership. Like our, but like, but that's, mm -hmm. it's like, where's the fucking loyalty? I would never dream of canceling a membership right now, but I see people doing that. And I just, I just, you know, it, it, or it, it, it doesn't make me, it, it, it makes me sad because I know I've seen what you guys have done over the years when people need help. And mm -hmm. now it's like the gym, you, you, you know, it's like oh, members can be dirty, man. And I, I don't yeah. think that's happening too much at Apollo. Cause like you guys run a fucking tight knit family there. It, it, but, it didn't through March, but it's right? like we're April, April. It's May. starting to come a little yeah. bit, but, um, so what we did through April is wait, no March. What we did through March was, 
just online stuff, like what every other CrossFit gym did. Sure. Online, Zoom, yeah. programming, whatever. Zoom bombing makes me laugh, by the way. What's that? Dude, have you, you don't know what Zoom bombing no, is? Dude, never the heard hackers it. are having a field day with everybody moving their shit <laughs> to the fucking, like, so, so, so people fucking hack into Zoom meetings and just, like, play, like, super fucking awful videos or, or like, run hate speech. And like there's there's zoom bombing is very is like they're YouTube? crashing yeah. the, the, the FBI crashing the, the FBI put out a warning for people who are running their businesses on Zoom and stuff like that. It's like oh dude, my god, there's there's zoom bombing. Could dude, you? I, I want a zoom bomb, Owen. Like I want a <laughs> zoom bomb. <laughs> Owen, you need Owen. to learn. I just to- went crazy with the idea of like, could you imagine showing up to like a Zoom <laughs> board meeting, but like doing it yeah. regular to where th- they're like, who is who is this guy? I'm like, oh, I'm in such and such department. And yeah. Become a board member. Yeah. No, the, the, the <laughs> thing we need is like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. Marty, you got a small fucking dick. And I think that's the problem with our fucking, you know, like I want a zoom bomb. Oh, I want a man. zoom bomb. I will so learn bad. how to do it. Owen, learn how to hack into Done. zoom. I'm looking it up because, right now. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do zoom, but you have to fucking, you know, you, you got to do something. You got to do yeah. something. Yeah. When the- <laughs> I'm focused on Zoom bomb right well, now. That's the greatest. Wanna, that's the I greatest. Go on YouTube I know. What would you do if you were able to Zoom bomb? Uh, <laughs> I'll just fucking yeah, just sitting there like, dude, man, oh my god, just doing a sexy naked dance, oh, and things like funny. that. In a fuck Zoom bombing the is going on. Possibilities are yeah. endless mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, I think it's wasted just like throwing like hate speech or or music or yeah. obnoxious videos. Mm-hmm. Like just yeah. the ability to to insert yourself into a meeting you have no yeah, business being. But we in. were we were we were saying earlier cuz so like dude like oh, it's that's funny. funny. Now that everything is moving online, military things like that are going online, fucking Samsung, Korea's getting all our information, TikTok, but then everything's gone. Anyways, let's get back. Let's stay on TikTok. I like to get started. Yeah, no. Oh, are you, you a hater on TikTok? You, you don't I just have, don't understand you don't it. Have I don't know a TikTok, if I'm like, man. Are you 30 years old yet? I'm f- like you're this month, dude. This it's going to be the worst 30th birthday. your birthday. You're just in time for TikTok. No, yeah. thirty years no. old. Wait, Shut the fuck up, movement, man! Shut the. F- I thirties and forty year olds are all going to TikTok. No, it's no, amazing. No, no. What is TikTok? I just don't get it. I've Derek seen people do it. videos. Which Nobody above it. thirty with any <laughs> amount of self respect does TikTok videos. I feel so bad for my friends who are like thirty two and they haven't been able to amass an Instagram following, yeah. and so now they're going to TikTok, yeah. and they're dancing in their kitchen and they're posting it to their Instagram, and I just and I, I'm I, laughing I, at it. No, on my no, couch no, at no, night. no, no. I scroll <laughs> when I, I almost, I almost made this one of my stories the other day because dude, I, I, I almost wanted to say like, Hey, you know, um, my friends who are like 36 years old and they're making TikTok dance videos and they post it to their Instagram. I was like, as a courtesy to you, I scroll through that very fast <laughs> because I will like, cause I, I won't see you at your worst <laughs> <laughs> and then we will never have to talk about it. It's like, I've done a lot of bad shit when I was drinking and had like making poor choices. If you're 36 years old and dancing on TikTok, you, I just like, I will, I will do you the courtesy of not watching watching that video and then it's like it never happened but anyways but anyways is there a scenario where it's okay no (laughs) fuck tiktok (laughs) and it's a fucking chinese program and they're fucking yeah 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 might as well get a fucking weiwei phone huawei 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 yeah the Mm -hmm. direct line straight to the communist party man yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah. since we fucking went super far off track, can I give my savage slapper of the week? Oh shit. I got a slapper lined up. You don't like li- you don't like metal. You guys fucking yell at me all the time. There was a song you were listening to just before this started that sounded okay to me. Okay, but it probably wasn't this. It, because it had some ebbs and flows to the song. But the all the time, it's like, ah, the whole time, I don't like that. Blah! Yeah, I get, I, so at, 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 at CrossFit Apollo, I, during, I, I work out during an open gym, and I, I typically hijack the auxiliary cord when I'm there, and I play my music. <laughs> Within and at now, least 30 seconds, that, that you own the airwaves of that place. Yeah, but, you know, but I'm, but I'm courteous to other members. Anyways, like, I love Spotify, um, and I, you know, Spotify will give you band recommendations and shit like that, mm-hmm. um, and I find found i just clicked on one they're very hit or miss but i found a fucking i found a fucking slapper dude this band is called winds brought siberia and the song is called <laughs> dot 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 siberia it's fucking amazing but the, so the dot 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 mm-hmm. it's it's ellipses siberia ellipses okay if, yeah el- so it's winds brought siberia is the band name dot 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 siberia is the song I fucking love it. I it's a fucking 
It's a slapper. It's, it's a, a savage it's a, slapper. It's the savage slapper of the week. We need a sound it's, effect for it's that. It's the motherfucking savage. <laughs> you know, the savage slapper. Yeah. So, oh boy, I just, I just wanted, I just wanted to share that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm thinking about Owen doesn't let me chew on the podcast anymore. I, I have, I have rules, no, but we have where are the but rules. I pause. There's no I rules. Pause too much. Yeah. It was just that one time. It was just, it was, it was just like the one, the one podcast. Yeah. You're like, you're like, there were a lot of pauses. I was like, did, yeah. were you listening to it or yeah. were you watching it? Cause every yeah. pause was you, was you spitting into a, mm-hmm. a spitter. I'm going to ask you a question now, Chad. Let's do it. And this is going to be a fucking, this is going to be a filler until I, and then I want to, I do want to talk to you about something, but before we get to that, I want to ask you this question. I asked Stacy's very good at would you rather questions. Yeah, she's and so good. I had Stacy send me a handful of would you rather questions, and this was my favorite one. I thought it was very interesting. So, Chad, would you rather <clears throat> be a victim of a serial killer or turn into a serial killer? That's a good question. It is a good question. Oh, I well, I mean, I don't want to die, so I guess I'll go kill people. Yeah, could you do it? Into no, like, I've so, actually thought about that. Could I do it? Like, like <laughs> wait, hold on. Hold on. Like, you just like, you just sit around your house thinking about no, fucking okay. killing I, people. I, you know, oh, that, I don't. No. We're all, you know. <laughs> he set you up for that one, bud. I mean, I do, but that's not a surprise. I'm okay, surprised so, <laughs> to hear you say you just sit around thinking about killing people. I, well, no, no, I didn't say that. I was wondering <laughs> you did if say I that. could. You do said it. exactly that. No, I said, could I do it? <laughs> okay, so could I didn't you? imagine like yeah. how I would do it, like so with it, a saw or whatever. If it was between you dying and you murdering multiple people for the rest of your life. Is this like a Dexter situation though? Like, am I killing bad people? There's no, no, there's no, well, there's- Well, can I kill bad people? The, yes. So the, the question mm. is, would you rather be a victim of a serial killer or turn into a serial killer? There's no rules within that. You can make your own guidelines, mm. but- You could be a moral- a moral-based uh, serial mm-hmm. killer, I guess. Mm. Uh, Rid the world of pieces of shit. Yeah, I just, I don't think I have the skill set to do that either. So I don't know if I'm going to. It's pretty easy. You just pull the fucking trigger. (laughs) That's it, man. (laughs) But then you got to get away with it. Uh, Yeah. To do it multiple times. No, be like, like, dude, it, it is not hard to get away with murder. We've. I, I got we've a lady you, just, stopped, you stopped after we've what well, have you like, done we were in the infantry we <laughs> fucking, right. we've had this shit plotted out for oh, years yeah. we we know exactly how we're gonna kill anybody we know exactly how we're gonna kill our wives if it, <laughs> if it came down to it like do you not have a plan i mean uh, like, you no. know how you do it you talk you talked about it on guard didn't well, you? you don't want to talk about it just in case you actually do it mm-hmm no, I'm. I've been married so long that I don't. I don't hey, know if if you if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. It's right? true. Like, <laughs> all right, plan for any situation. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you'd rather be a serial killer? That would be my answer. Owen, Owen, what would you do? Would you rather be a victim of a serial killer, or would you uh, like to be a serial killer? I think I would. Uh, I think I definitely be a serial killer. But I, I definitely have like guidelines of who I want. Would after. you enjoy it? No. No, I don't think about. I have I'm su- I have a super bad conscience, so I feel like I'd be really bad at at it, and I'd probably <laughs> I did it. I'd, I did I'd it. Totally I totally turn it. like I, I would it. give yeah. myself up so quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> did you do it? No. Are you sure? Fuck. How'd you know? Yeah. 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 I think you'd eventually enjoy it. Yeah. If you kept doing it. Yeah. I, I think so. I. This is getting real dark right now. No, that's well, okay. So we're gonna we're could. gonna we're gonna we're gonna turn the conversation to life. So like I appreciate our conversation we had about your transition from athlete to coach and you know, like, you know, just like the stresses of being a business owner right now. But like one thing, you know, so like Cameron. Mm. You know, how old is Cameron now? Uh almost nine months. Nine months. Yeah. So you had a boy nine months ago and I and so, you know, Stacy and I were very open. Is this, are we okay to talk about yeah. anything we want to fucking talk about mm-hmm. here? Okay. Yeah, so like Stacy and I, we went, well, like we went through infertility fucking shit and we, we had our boys, Jack and Max via IVF, you know, and then you guys went through not, or it is like infertility as well. And you had to take a different route yeah. and that shit was like fucking wild. So how, how, how long, so you guys had your boy nine months ago. Mm-hmm. So two years ago about almost two years ago it finally happened how long have you guys been trying to have 
kids or i just want to talk about this because yeah. you know i'll tell you what when stacy and when stacy and i were open and honest about our infertility yeah. issues people came out of the motherfucking oh yeah woodwork it's like oh fuck i'm not alone so yeah so yeah. like you That's know thing. it wasn't a thing for me i didn't give a shit but stacy was very fucked up about this not being able to have kids this infertility thing yeah and um you know when we were open and honest about it people were coming out of the woodworking I didn't know how fucking common this shit was. I didn't yeah. know how common miscarriages were. I didn't know how common infertility was. And people would say to us, they're like, oh, you're so brave for talking about this and breaking the stigma. And I'm like, what do you, like, this is just life, yeah. you know? But uh, a lot of people secretly <clears throat> fucking struggle with this shit. And it, it, it fucking blew me away. It blew me away how many people, how, and like, that's a, maybe like, that's a thing, like, it's very common and it's beating a lot of people up and it's just, there's nothing, there's nothing shameful or embarrassing about infertility No, absolutely know? not. because yeah. what a time to be alive. Now right? I got two boys, you got one, yeah. you got one boy, two legs. I got two boys, one legs. I think that was kind of <laughs> bullshit. God, God had a little laugh at us there. Uh, <laughs> he got the math wrong on that one. But uh, yeah, so uh, just like what, how, how long had you guys been trying to have kids before you needed to go the... We, we were trying without trying for, you know, a little while. No, then, I was fucking. Can I yeah. <laughs> that, that whole thing, right? Yeah. Where you stop using mm -hmm. protection or whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say three years before we actually got pregnant mm -hmm. uh, or Courtney got pregnant. Um, it was in that, in that three years, did it start? Cause I'll tell you for me, it was like, it started casual with a decision. Like, Hey, we'll just like, we'll start to try to have kids. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And mm -hmm. then the fucking apps come out and then she's taking fertility fucking pee stick and then fucking it's thing. scheduled how the, when like, you're having sex like, hey yeah. hey hey it is 11 57 a.m let's Tuesday, go and you need to penetrate me i'm like oh shit fuck like yeah well, all right turn I on that dirty video that i like you know? <laughs> time, <laughs> time to clock did it, in did it, get, did it did it start casual and yeah. become more serious it is the same same routine we had, okay so i'm not sure the exact timeline on this but we actually did she did get pregnant before cameron we had a mm -hmm. miscarriage mm -hmm. um and then shortly after that, we find that she goes through premature menopause. Really? At 30 years old. Oh, Holy shit. shit. Yeah. Wait, she, she's older than you? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Yeah. It's gross. I, I can't I can't do a I can't do a <laughs> older or taller. Oh, old my chicks fucking, are awesome. No, well, is Talia older than you? Uh no. I just I don't know. It's a weird thing for me. Like older it's like a that's, months. that's how insecure I am. I need a younger woman and shorter than I like older. <laughs> I need to at least <laughs> I need to be numerically superior in all ways because I will always feel inadequate. What? <laughs> at least I'm older than you. <laughs> numerically and su taller. <laughs> superior. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So so early. So what was what was um um. So you guys were trying to have kids and you couldn't was where you guys like, did it become something that weighed on your conscience throughout the day? Like it became our life. Stacy and I, the trying to have a kid became our life. I would say like the last six months leading up to our first appointment with the IVF doctor, it became our life. And it was a huge stressor for us. Mm -hmm. And it was just like kind of like an elephant in the room. Right. Was that, like that with yeah you guys. It, it was you know when i was at work i was at work and mm -hmm. i try not to think about it and i, and I think i did a pretty good mm -hmm. job separating you know those things but at home there was like this cloud you know yeah. like and it's, like, just, it's a cloud of a little bit you're, it's devastating yeah it's devastating when it's and not not because you feel inadequate or something like that it's just like once you make the decision that you want to fucking yeah, I want to build a, kid, a family. You can't. Mm -hmm. You're just like, like, just like, oh, fuck. Yeah. This thing that I thought was an option for me my entire and life and all of a sudden has just become not an option, and maybe? It's, and it's out of your control. Yeah, I can't do anything? Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. when did you guys decide to like not go the natural route and things like that? What was the process? Like, um, Almost immediately, we were like, uh, 
Courtney and myself, like I've always wanted to be a dad and, uh, which is a weird thing to want, I think at mm-hmm. such a young age, but I always knew that I just wanted I to care. I never wanted to be a dad. I never wanted yeah. to be a dad never, either. Yeah. I, I think I'm maybe weird. I, yeah. There's maybe something sick and demented nah, about that. I don't know. You're just gay. You don't know it yet. I, I swear I'm like <laughs> one chromosome away from it. Like I do a lot of like, yeah, I do yeah. a lot of shit. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like my genetic code is a close type. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like you can still tell what the word is. I'm but. pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm not into men, yeah. but like, <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> As a waste of my last hour. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but I've been courting. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but I, uh, <laughs> I watch way too much Bravo, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, podcast is over. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, no, I think, um, so it, it was, it was hard. I, I actually forget where the question was. Um, but when we found out that she was, went through premature menopause, like we missed that window. Like that, what does that, what does that mean when, what, if, what does that mean when premature menopause happens? What, why does that shut down? It's, she can just no longer produce eggs, like she the hormones that are required. So, just, so my understanding is, so this is something I learned in our fucking process is that women are born with all the eggs that they'll ever have in their life. True. And, they, and they just fucking, I didn't. So like every woman, you know, 22 years old has a fucking sack of hundreds of eggs inside of her and they just release them. I thought, I thought it was my understanding that women grew a fucking egg every month, you know, but they just have a fucking pouch of eggs yep. and they release them every fucking, and I'm, Chad's laughing at me because I'm like pointing to my ovaries right now. <laughs> <laughs> I talk with my hands, you know, my fallopian tubes and things like that. So she was just out of eggs. She was just out of eggs. Nothing. The eggs are gone. Nothing. Just like sprouts two weeks ago. The eggs are all gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you only get one carton. <laughs> yeah. That was such bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know what bothered me first about this whole COVID thing? It, I, it was all like whatever to me. And then they took away samples at Costco. That pissed me off. <laughs> Costco's a lot nicer to go to though right now with the, with them limiting people in there. Oh my! It's See, the first, oh the line. If I don't you're like listening lines. and you lost your job and you don't know how you're going to pay rent, just know that Chad's sacrifice is much greater than yours because he couldn't get a fucking. <laughs> Uh, half inch by half inch square of Colby cheese. Yeah, at, and it, and it yeah. really cost, pissed them off. No, and it really I, pissed I, well, them I got, off. Yeah. I would say, new oh. butter crackers. <laughs> Why can't I try these? Fuck yeah. man. I'd be like, well, I'm, I'm. This one's for my wife, and then I end up with two. So, yeah. <laughs> and then she ends up with two, yeah. and then yeah. happy family. And then so, we don't have to buy a dollar fifty hot yeah. dog on our yeah. way out. So, yeah. so we did in vitro fertilization, which is. Um, I was able to like, we, ex- we grew Stacy's eggs and we sucked them out. And then I jerked off into a cup and that's we a matched. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Like, Oh yeah. That's a fucking story right there. It was a, it, that's a, that's a story in itself. <laughs> I <can't>. but, <laughs> yeah. So she has to go in an operating room and all I have to do is masturbate. It was a pretty good deal for men. Yep. Um, but, and so like they matched our sperm or they, they, we, we, we paid a little extra for ha- to have them inject the sperm into her egg. Like they inject it, you know? So we did. And, and, and so that was our process. We matched her eggs with my sperm. So we have a completely biological child, but you guys do not because Courtney didn't have eggs and your route <clears throat> was way more ex- dude this fucking so wild yeah so like you said when you first find out about these things you feel so just lonely mm-hmm. like there's no one else that exists and in courtney's case it was almost like reality there is mm-hmm. it's very very rare that this happens to somebody and so she felt just awful and so um yeah she couldn't produce any eggs so we eventually were like all right so her sister. We had to come to terms with that. Like she has a sister that's close in age. They're very similar. Is that where you got the eggs? No. So oh, okay. we're like, all right, we're going to go that route. And so then her sister started doing, uh, just to go in to get testing, stuff like that. It, they, the doctor says that she has, anyways, her sister had the exact same thing. No shit. Her sister already had twins, oh, no shit. but went through premature menopause. And they said the likelihood of that happening was just, astronomical like yeah. they, there was there's was yeah. very very small chance they thought it was impossible mm-hmm. um so we couldn't go that route and so then we had to come to terms of like all right so i guess we're gonna look at like an egg bank of some mm-hmm. kind right so we're online looking through mm-hmm. these women and it's such a weird <laughs> experience well there's fucking profiles and stuff so like yeah. I, have a, I have a friend 
in town, a very good friend. And his wife does that. She's an egg donor. Mm-hmm. And she goes through. So just like, and it's the same process that I did to Stacy, like all those shots, all the injections to grow their eggs and then they extract them and things like that. Mm-hmm. There's egg donors out there. Yeah. And shit. Fuck. They get, they get like five to 10 K per fucking egg yeah. extraction. Well, even and some of get, them. And you get graded on your eggs and the more successful, you know, like your first time donating eggs, if that results in a successful pregnancy, you get bumped up. And you get more money for your eggs and things like oh, that. Wow. So you had to go through this egg donor list. Yeah. Huh? There was this one girl. They, they're all like the set price, right? You pay what you pay mm-hmm. and then you just choose from this list. But some girls will say, no, my eggs are worth more. And they'll put like an extra price on top of it. There was this one girl that was a model. Like she was just very, very pretty. And she charged Ooh, an extra 10. So a premium the put on your eggs. It's a premium. Premium wow. on eggs. Can so we, it was an extra ten grand to do that. You really? Uh, yeah. Did you we, get the primo egg? No. The thing is, we picked based off of white uh, trash. You got the you got the white trash egg. Like, <laughs> no. I mean, she's got a double wide. You know, like <laughs> you know. that's respectable. <laughs> yeah. We uh, no. We um. Uh, it was. It's kind of a. It's an interesting thought process going through the whole thing, but at the end of the day, we wanted the kid to be as much like Courtney as we possibly possibly could sure, yeah. and so we didn't want any like extreme features that would overpower mine because courtney and i are look similar enough mm-hmm. um and so we didn't want any extreme features we want hopefully like dusty blonde hair at the most like those kinds of things so yeah. it because if you look at our our son cameron he's he looks like our kid sure absolutely yeah. I, I forget and he sometimes. is our kid yeah and that's no, important ab- absolutely he's um, our kid oh and technologically speaking can i take a pee break um I'm yeah. going to yeah. pee my pants. I think we could. <laughs> Can I just pause for two seconds? Yeah. Okay. I'll just keep well, everything rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm back. I'm back. Right. Are we good to go? Yeah, good to go. I, I had to pee. I'm so sorry to cut you off right there. It's like we're getting to our heart to heart moment, but I, I was going to pee my pants. <laughs> and so, and so, um, can I, can I interject real quick? Yes. I just want to say real quick, because I think it's important if he's listening to this in like 20 years, you know what I mean? Like, oh, sure. I think he's going to, yeah. he's going to have his own struggles with this, I'm sure. But like. Um, we're happy that all that happened the way it did. You know, I we really it couldn't are. have been any other oh, way. Yeah. We have the son that we so were hard. meant to have, yeah. and I we love the shit out of him. Yeah. yeah, and I I couldn't. I'm glad it happened this way because we have Cameron. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you yeah. would not have had him had it worked out any no, other he's way. Such a, he's, he has some like ass. She's such a cute right. girl, man. Yeah. Like she's the best. <laughs> <laughs> she's adorable. He's a dude. I'm just kidding. You're like, yo, uh, she, uh, Cameron, your boy, your boy. It's a fucking boy. Nine months old. And and I think, dude, like the science of everything is is, is wild. <clears throat> so so you guys went with an egg donor mm-hmm. and you matched your sperm and you implanted it. You guys yeah. created a fucking embryo, right? Or a zygote, is that the word? Or embryo, right? Yeah. And you and you yep. so did you guys just you got oh I remember you guys just had like one embryo put in. We only right? put one in, mm-hmm. but we have like nine embryos. Mm. Um Still? so those are on ice, yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh which is something else we have to come to terms with because we're not gonna I'm not having nine kids. Dude, that was well, so Stacy and I had to fucking we donated ours to science. We had two oh yeah. We had two uh remaining ones. We'll probably that, end up doing uh, something. We ended up transferring a boy and a girl and it's a wild thing because so we had we ended up we had I think it was four viable embryos. Or I think it was five. Five viable embryos. We had um three girls and two boys, you know? And, and so we had names for all of them and things like that. And so our place was Red Rock Fertility just off of the 215 there. Mm-hmm. And so for a year after, after you know, even after we had the boys, we, we kept our embryos frozen. And for a year we would drive past that place and it's like our kid is in that building and yeah. they had names yeah. you know like the, the um, it's like hard. we had hannah there and you know and so we ended up transferring a boy and a girl and for the longest time we thought we were when we found out stacy was stacy was pregnant we thought we were going to have a boy and a girl and it wasn't until like 20 weeks when we found out the girl had a fucking dick that we were like, what the fuck is going on? We had to, so like, you know, when you're saying like astronomical odds of things like that happening, we had, we have identical twin boys who each had their own sack and their placenta 
and things like that. And there's a less than 4% chance of that happening. So what happened for us is we transferred a boy and a girl and the girl didn't catch, you know, you, you try to implant it on that. Um, they got their, I just call it a puffy pussy, whatever that sack is in their vagina. You, the, that's where the egg catches. Right. Uh -huh. And so the girl didn't catch and the, the boy, it's real scientific. The, yeah. it's very scientific. I just call it the, 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 the puff pussy. Yeah, you no, know? That's what it's they're called. changing yeah. their textbooks. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, and, uh, they're changing so textbooks right our, now. Our, the, the boys split in the first like two to four days or something like that. And so we have identical twin boys that each had their own sack and their own placenta and things like that. So the science of all this stuff is so weird. And I just, and I, you know, I know what we felt like when we were going through all that. And it's not like suffering in silence is a strong way to say it, but it must have been like in on you and Courtney's mind and, 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 and Courtney knowing it's not her biological child, but you just, it, but it is, it, it isn't. And it is like, she's a fucking, I see her Instagram stories all the time and shit like that. And she's, she's a, like that is your guys's kid. That mm -hmm. is your motherfucking kid through and through all the fucking way, Yeah, you know, and, and the lengths at which you guys had to go to have that kid is just, Dude, it, it takes a lot of strength and patience and it's, and it's, and it's fucking cool. And now, yeah. And now you got Cameron. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a. Science is pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have that it's, option. It's fucking wild. But like, you know, our stories are different in detail, mm -hmm. but similar in what it takes to get there. What's it's cool just, is it happened at like the same, very, <laughs> very close together. Like within oh, yeah. months. Cause mm -hmm. your, your son's. Nine months. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're they just turned one, right? Mm. Yeah, our boys are fifteen months now, 15. so just a few months ahead. Yeah, so it's it's pretty yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's 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 very cool. So, um, <laughs> but and you guys, I, I I've asked you this before when we we're just you, you want more kids? You're gonna do it again, or where are you at with that? Is yeah, that, that like one, then go about? from there, right? Yeah. We mm -hmm. we want to have another one, then go from there, and we'll start having a conversation mm -hmm. around twelve months. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and then we'll see. I don't know. Um, I think at the most three is what I think. Yeah. Um, you can do them all close. You're gonna have them all close. Careful, together. man. So I, I got a friend at LVAC there, and he's got, he's got, he's a firefighter, and he's got a wife, and they got two kids. They got two girls, and then they were gonna try for their third. Their plan was to have three kids, and they fucking, um, uh, their third kid is twins. So now she's pregnant with twins. And I yeah. when he told me that, I just fucking laughed. Yep. Man, you got you got twins in your family. Your sister has twins. Yeah, there's twins yeah. on both sides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 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 so when when Courtney, when when you do the the implanting process or the transfer or whatever it's called, they you you give her drugs to make her body think that so she's hyper fertile. And so if you transfer a fucking embryo, mm -hmm. there's always that fucking chance that you're just gonna have twins and <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why we didn't. I didn't want to. We didn't want to put in more than one egg. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, the doctor felt pretty confident that one would have been good, or one embryo mm -hmm. would have been good anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we just kind of stuck with him. But do you remember sticking her with needles? All yeah, dude. I just we I laugh about it because I do and I don't. Or you're you're still you're still in the first year, and I like that's trench warfare. Like when you have a kid <laughs> like that, you are in the trenches. The first you know? six months like are like you just brutal. fucking you just black out. I don't remember shit, you know. And uh, uh, it's hard for me to remember. Uh, it, it it you know as as difficult and as painful as it was in the time when you it's just like when you're facing that unknown and you don't know if you're ever gonna have kids like it's it's devastating and now I don't mm. even remember that yeah and and if you know you bring it up like do you remember giving her shots of like oh yeah now I can see it mm -hmm. but I have to like physically search my brain to remember that time because now we're parents and it's fucking we're, it's amazing yeah and, and we don't have time we don't have the commodity of looking backwards. It's just forward thinking now because it's we're we're parents and now mm -hmm. everything is and I don't know about you but like I've changed like since I became a a, a a dad it's just changed my brain completely mm -hmm. like I'm so much less sad than I used to be because now other lives depend on me. And
and things like that. And it's fucking cool, man. And I, I'm sure you feel the same way. And I'm, I'll get sappy as fuck if we keep talking about <laughs> here. just a bunch of dudes fucking sitting around talking about how cool it is to be a dad. You know? You know? Is your boy walking yet? Is he fucking? Uh, no, he's, he's crawling pretty good mm -hmm. and he's getting up on things mm -hmm. and crawling on things, but mm -hmm. he's not walking yet. Yeah. I'm kind of disappointed in him. Yeah. Well, dude, shit, fuck. We just are my, dude, I fucking, I almost lost my shit. Have you, have you noticed? Here, here's the thing that happened to me once I became a dad. I was like, I watch movies that I used to watch all the time and then I, like they didn't bother me. And now um, I watched oh a movie that I've seen a million times. Uh, 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 uh. And then in the movie, there's a scene where they fucking, a kid dies. And in the past, ooh, I know what it was. It was The Last Kingdom. Have you seen The Last Kingdom on Netflix? No. Oh, dude, The Last Kingdom. You need to watch this show. It's very good. Um, there's a baby who dies. And when I remember the first time I watched this show, it, it bored me. It was it was boring to me. And then I, I re recently we rewatched it, and now I'm a dad, and the baby dies, and I was fucked up, dude. I was like, "Fuck you, Jack." I was like, like try, I was trying not to cry, man. Just trying not to cry. Do, do you notice? This one hundred percent. Like, yeah, dude. I, I can't give you a specific like instance or like show I remember watching. Yeah, but one hundred percent. Go home and go have a few beers, and go home and watch Coco tonight. I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that shit will fuck you up. You talking about the the yeah. cartoon one? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Coco. Where? Yeah. What's go the one with the cow? That's another good one. Uh, uh, Ferdinand. You mm. see, have you watched that with the boys yet? Mm -mm. There's the the opening fucking scene. Um, the the young bull Ferdinand the when he's a baby his dad's getting hauled off because he won't he's not a good bull for fighting anymore so they haul him off to the beef factory and we just put in the Disney movie one time and Declan's watching it and I come walking in and Declan's crying on the couch dude because freaking Disney's got this show Fox where the kid's me. dad yeah. gets hauled off and I was like oh man yeah sorry buddy yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I keep I just I just like I'm so emotional now I yeah. keep crying during movies and, but I'm not crying crying but I'm tearing up and like yeah. I will not be fucking weak in front of my boys <laughs> you know like I will not show this weakness yeah it's so funny what kids do to you man but I think we're gonna uh, wrap it up here. I, mm. Thanks for joining us today, man. Yeah, I, man. I, thanks for coming I, by. I, had a good time. You know, I really, um, I need, I, I need to get there. Uh, going back to what we were first talking about from that transition to fucking athlete, I don't to coach. I want. It's it's a funny thing with me. Like I want to serve people more, but I can't seem to let go of this fucking desire to be number one. I don't, I don't know fucking how I've accomplished enough and, and enough to be proud of, but I, I don't know how to fucking let go. And I'd like to get there. And I just admire you for, I like, I love the way you run the gym. I love the way you care about the people there. And I know, um, that now, um, just quickly, uh, you run a, a, a program and we, we talked about a little bit habitat. Yeah. You run the habitat challenge. There was one supposed to start this month, right? Uh, May 4th was the start date. Um, it's kind of fluid right now mm -hmm. where we may push that back a little mm -hmm. bit, but it's, this is not like completely announced yet, but what we're going to do is work with affiliates and donate 100% of net proceeds to the affiliates that sign up. Yeah, um, that's very cool. And so right on. that'll come up soon yeah, and sure. because going back to like the rest of the gyms, mm -hmm. I, I'm, you know, I'm struggling a little bit. I know every other gym out there is struggling. Mm -hmm. Everyone's impacted by this. And yeah. I think, if we have an opportunity to help, then, then I know let's do dude, it. I, I feel that right now too. It's like, fuck, what can we do to help? And I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, but if you hear me talk about Habitat in the future, it's because it's, it's a business. My, my friend here, Chad Cole started, it's an awesome, it's a 10 week, you call it a challenge, but I call it more of a nutrition course. My yeah. mom's been doing it and my mom has been, it's been life changing for my mom and nice. eye opening. And she's seen like awesome improvements uh, uh, with her relationship with food and cooking and things like that. So thank you for helping my mom because yeah, like, I'm her son. She don't listen to me, you know, but she listens to you. Um, I think that's going to do it uh, for, for this week's show, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Savage Saturdays on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm Derek Wyda. We got Owen, Chad Cole. We See love you, you guys. Week. Good night. See you guys.